I don't miss it. And Ash, I'm gonna unmute you and go ahead when you're ready. Okay, sorry, I you unmuted me and then I remuted because I had a cough and then I didn't realize I couldn't re-unmute. Um, hi, everybody. Okay, so I'm Ashley Molstead. Bonnie and I are two big ass pregnant women right now bringing it to you on this call. Um, Thank you guys, like she said, for making tonight a priority. We're excited to share with you uh, our tips on attraction marketing. But before we do, want, we wanted to make sure that it's abundantly clear that you cannot do attraction marketing until you're ready to do attraction marketing. In fact, I was just on a call this morning with Moira Kusaba, who is a she will be a two-time top 10 coach, superstar diamonds, um, complete baller in this business. And she said she still cannot rely on attraction marketing. So she still has to invite every single day. And I think we wanted to share with you our tips on attraction marketing, how to make your social media stand out and uh, connect with people. But we wanted to make sure to caution you that I see so many coaches try to hop into attraction marketing before they're ready and then your business won't grow. You have to actually be doing behind the scenes messaging and inviting. Um, it took me probably four years or something to of every day showing up and inviting people doing that work behind the scenes before I could really uh, rely on my attraction marketing. Now I was, you know, building my attraction marketing by um, building a social media platform that represented me that I was really proud of and connected with people. But it wasn't until I started really getting, you know, four years in really getting enough people coming to me that I didn't have to go out. So take these tips and impl implement them, but don't rely on attraction marketing. If you are not, if you're still struggling to hit success club, attraction marketing is not for you. If you are not having, you know, probably at least a couple hundred people coming to you a month, then you still need to be doing your own individual behind the scenes, one-on-one -on -one inviting and following up. So, um, but you can do this in conjunction with that. Just don't think that this replaces that hands-on um, intimate messaging, especially in the beginning as you're building your business. So I'm going to share my screen and run you guys through um, how we have outlay, outlined our social media to make it a place that is attractive where people want to come. So I know that this is going to be like kind of basic, but I think it's really important. I see so many coaches where I go to their social media, your social media is your magazine. So if you were to put together a magazine of your life, you wouldn't want to just hand out page after page after page of sweaty selfies of you in a bathroom or like, you know, by your gym or whatever, because it's not interesting. It's very one dimensional. You need to have a whole variety of things, but you need to become a student of selfie school. And there's lots of different ways to take great selfies. I'm going to give you some tips here and I'll show you some examples on the next page. But I know a lot of you probably are still working full time. Some of you might be full time stay at home mamas. Um, some of you might be full time coaches. It's important that you show up uh, sometimes put together and you can show up a lot as just like chaos and whatever your life is. But I do think it's important that sometimes you get yourself put together, right? You want to create a brand that people want to be a part of. So if it's constant chaos and mess and dark and doesn't really look like attractive, People already have their own mess and dark and chaos in their own homes and their own heads. So you want to be kind of like a bright light for people. Now, not all of your photos need to be, you know, perfectly done up and definitely on your stories. I don't think you should be or need to be all the time put together, but sometimes those need to be in there because people want the kind of lifestyle that you have, right? Um, and it just looks cleaner and better. Um, wear your hair down sometimes. I mean, for the girls, I guess, right? Uh, all of your images should be light, bright, and eye-catching. So you want to use white natural lighting. Um, I would say get to a window as often as you can. I've We kind of snowboard, and I've spent some time in some rentals that have been really dark. And I know I just saw Lindsay Matway say on her story recently that her current house is really yellow and dark, and she's moving to a bright house. But there's a few ways. So window, 
get outside, find daylight whenever possible, right? But get outside. Um, if you don't invest in a ring light, actually what I'm using right now is this, I don't know if you, well, you guys probably can't see that because it's my screen, but if you can see my little face, it's this mirror. They, um, this is R-I-K-I Reiki mirror. There are uh, mirrors on, or there's lights on Amazon that you can do that are like 15 bucks. Um, invest in good lighting. If you work out early in the morning when the sun's not out or whatever, right? You just need light, bright, and eye-catching images. Um, and then according, at edit according to your personal brand colors. So um, I would say it's important to figure out, especially with Instagram being such a big thing, these days, your visual brand is also important, just like your regular brand. Like the content that you put up visually also needs to be appealing because what's going to happen is people go to your page and they look at that top nine, right? So what do your last nine photos say about you? And is it the same old, same old? Are they dark? Can you see the content? Can you see what's up there? Is it cohesive in coloring and color story? That's why presets recently have become a really big thing. So Lightroom is a free app that you can download to your phone. And then there's a ton of presets you can purchase on like Etsy or you can make your own. Um, and that way, every photo that you take, you just click this one button and it edits everything. And then you can edit within your preset, but that way it's cohesive. Now they don't have, like, I have kind of a colorful preset, I would say. So, um, you know, I've got my visual brand. If you go to someone's page, like Amy Silverman, she has a very kind of moody, earthy kind of vibe. Um, Moira has a really great preset that's kind of like pastel -y. Um, Christina Battaglia, I think that's how you say your last name, right? She has kind of um, a dark, edgy kind of vibe. So figure out what appeals to you, what your eyes like, and then create your brand and make it cohesive around that. This is a small thing, but a big thing. Smile in to the camera lens. So there's a, you know, the camera on your phone, but I can see so many times when people are looking at themselves in the photo versus the camera, right? Versus the lens. It's a small thing, but it's the difference between making eye contact with people that are in your feed and not. I can always see when someone's looking at themselves in a photo. So it's a small thing, but a big thing. Um, I already said, get outside, play around with angles, timers, portrait mode. The new iPhone 11 has amazing camera features. And think before you put up something, would this image stop a scroll? Is this, it would, if my, cause thumbs are going a mile a minute, right? If I saw this in my feed, would it stop my scroll? So think that before you post, make your magazine look pretty. Okay. So here's some tips on different ways you can take selfies. Because again, that same post-workout sweaty selfie that you take in your bathroom or your gym or your living room or whatever, it's just not interesting. Those, throw them up um, on your stories, you know, talk on your stories about, sh show the consistency of you working out every day, but your feed shouldn't be just your same old sweaty selfie. And it shouldn't, even if it's not sweaty, it shouldn't just be you with a straight on selfie every time either. So here's some ideas. You can get, this is Jess Dukes here, indoor by a window. I'm guessing she put this on a timer and it looks like perhaps she used portrait mode because you can see the images blurred out back there, like the background. So it looks very, you know, professional. Um, <clears throat> the second photo is me natural light, new angle. I put my phone on a timer. So I just open the front door and I get really creative. I have yet to find a tripod that I like. So I think I propped my phone up like on a railing, set it on a timer, sat down, took a photo, right? Again, bright. That was one of the apartments that I was renting this summer in Oregon. That was really like the walls were painted yellow. You can see it's like yellow wood flooring. It was really dark in there. So I had to find the light. Lindsay here is using a ring light. So she's indoor with a ring light. Um, this is Ashley Smith. This is a photo I'm assuming taken by someone else. She has a lot of pictures on her feed in front of this wall. So I'm guessing that's at her house, um, which is a beautiful background, kind of a beautiful aesthetic mixed in her feed. And I'm guessing her husband took that for her, but she could have used a timer on it. Um, include objects, objects like babies. There's um, Bonnie with little Evie. So is it Evie or Evie? Evie. No, Evie, I think. I'm trying to read your lips. But um, what? Evie. Evie. Okay. Here's Bonnie with little Evie, right? Um, that's breaks up your feed, makes it look interesting. Uh, if you don't have kids, 
dogs, drinks, um, like, you know, whatever. I, I'm a big, I feel like Raina Odell, I don't know if she still does, but she was really into graphic tees, things that said stuff, cups, that mugs that say stuff. There's all kinds of objects you can use. Um, throw up lifestyle photos that create FOMO. I feel like Moira's feed is really good at this. Um, she, her team is so close that like she has such a local team that she has, she gets together with them all the time. And it makes me want to be a part of her team. Like she has such a tribe and community there and that's captured in this image, right? Like I want to be inside that image where they are right there. And then playing around with angles. This is super simple, but taking one from above, Sometimes your whole face doesn't even have to be in it. I learned that from Megan Ewelson years ago. It was just like her food. It was like her mouth and a plate. And I was like, oh, I love that. So just play around, but don't do the same old, same old. Get creative. And then as you're thinking about what to put up, I want you guys to think about that there are roughly, what, 400,000 Beachbody coaches, right? It's not, the fa it's not what you are selling. It's the fact that you are the one selling it. 400,000 coaches selling Be Beachbody. I guess they're not all working, but you know what I'm saying, right? There's a lot of coaches that are selling Beachbody, this one thing, but there's only one you. So think about the context of that and what you can share about you that is going to appeal to people. So here's some things I want you guys to think about. What is your why, right? Include all of these things at various times, um, when you're, when you're posting. If you're stuck on what to post, come back to these things. So what is your why? Why are you working out? Why are you showing up? What are you working for? What is motivating you? Those four things, um, it can be family, it can be a vacation, it can be um, a dream house. You know, Holly shared recently on a call, right? She's working now, her current why, she's achieved all these other things is to um, buy a lake house for her family. So sh letting people in on that vision and also your family and your life and the things that are important to you and your dreams, including all of those kinds of things in your feed. Um, having an attitude of gratitude. So as I mentioned, everybody, like we've all got chaos, right? Everybody's got their insecurities. Um, especially this time of year, things get crazy. They don't have a lot of time. They're stressed out. They've got enough to complain about. They've got debt. They're working for the weekends, right? It's just like your standard story. Everyone has that. So if you're showing up with more negativity or more stress or bitching about the politics or complaining about the weather or complaining about traffic or stupid things, it's not appealing. That doesn't appeal to anybody. Nobody wants to like, no one's saying, oh my gosh, we totally agree. Politics suck or whatever. I want to work with this person. Like no one's thinking that. You want to be a ray of sunshine. So what has being a coach changed about your life? Make people want to be a part of what you're doing. Now, if you don't have a team, when I, we all started, every, every top coach, every coach that's leading this group started with zero team, right? We didn't have that community yet, but there were things that were amazing about coaching that had nothing to do with my paychecks or the team. It, I, I remember sharing in the beginning that I looked forward to work. I looked forward, like I'd work all day in the corporate world, and then I would get excited to go home and continue working. And I shared that, that it was cool to look forward to working. I shared that it was exciting to dream again, dream beyond what I had been taught was possible, right? Because I'd all, it's always been my whole family, college, get a corporate job, climb the corporate ladder, work until you retire, right? Work for someone else. Um, and that's as big as I taught, was, was taught really to dream. So to dream again, um, the fact that I, it helped me, I bounce from diet to diet to diet. This is the one thing that helped me stay accountable to my own goals, right? It was a community of women that were supportive and uplifting that, um, cared about me, right? So having that community, there are so many stay at home moms that feel isolated and alone all day. So think about what are the things that coaching's done for you. And then of course, um, you know, as you get bigger in this business and grow deeper, you'll have more things about the community and, um, income and stuff. But I still go back to a story. I heard Steph Davies tell who's, I don't even think she's a coach anymore. I don't know, but she's, um, Jamie Shepard's coach. And I remember her saying that the post she made was about how Beachbody allowed her to purchase organic fruits and vegetables for her family rather than 
non-organic and that was really important to her and she couldn't afford organic before Beachbody. And that post is what attracted Jamie Shepard to start this. And now Jamie Shepard is a superstar diamond elite coach, right? You never know. And that's a small thing. Like what's the difference between organic and non-organic? So people aren't looking, they don't, they're not thinking, oh, I, I would love to be making six figures. They're not thinking that. They're thinking, I would love to pay down some of my debt, just to not live paycheck to paycheck, to have a little bit of breathing room, to not worry about where I'm going to, you know, get the money for these grocery bills. Another thing that Heather Shipley just made a post about recently um, was, or I think she talked about it on her wake up call, that last summer, she, when she would take her daughter to the pool, she would have to like strategically walk her a opposite side of the snack stand because she couldn't afford um, snacks. And this summer they were able to walk by the snack stand. And when her daughter wanted a snack, she said, okay, right? People, you don't have to have this huge income to share a huge impact that coaching's had on your life. Of course you wanna share your transformation. So share yours. I think that's gonna be the most powerful because people are interested in you. That's why they're on your feed, but Share other people's too. Share other, the people that, you know, you're working with, that you have personally helped people in your boot camp, people on your team, if you don't have a boot camp yet, um, share their testimonies. And then also you can share mental transformations that you've had. You can share transformations, you know, recognition as people are advancing their businesses and things like that. And then show consistency. That is all, should be all of our superpowers. People are always watching, always. They, you probably have a ton of silent lurkers and it feels like no one's watching, but I was one of those. I was a silent stalker behind the scenes. They're always watching. They're seeing you show up every day and you're taking them on that journey. So continue showing up even when it feels like no one's there. I promise that they are. And at the end of the day, I want you guys to think about stop selling Beachbody and start selling your lifestyle. Now, Beachbody for me was my solution, right? It's the thing that made me no longer have to bounce from diet to diet, that helped me to stop hating myself. Um, the thing that obviously gave me total financial and time freedom. Um, that's the, it was my solution, but that is not all I am and it's not all you are. So rather than trying to appeal to everybody and be this cookie cutter thing, sell your lifestyle, what makes you unique. And don't think that you have to, oh, I just lost my light. Don't think that you have to um, grow the biggest following ever um, in order to be successful in this business. It's not about getting more and more and more people. It's about helping the people that are already there, serving the people that are already watching you. When you show up with consistency, and you're intentional about what you're sharing and you're authentic in a way that makes you stand out, you're going to connect with the right people. Okay. Bonnie. What up? Okay. I'll share my screen because I also have a video to share. So, you know, a couple things really stick out to me and I know that Ashley kind of mentioned this in the beginning, but it's really nice to start to build up these tactical tools and have them in your tool belt, obviously. But Ash, let me just mute you so I can't, I don't know why the screen isn't switching. Hold on one second. Okay, I got you. Um, it's really, really nice to have these in your tool shed to use for when you feel like you can't post, how do you post, how do you make it better? When I was scrolling through actually slides today, I was like, damn, these are really tactical. That's awesome. So make sure you take some screenshots, take some notes, have this stuff in a booklet or on your phone somewhere where when you are feeling those times in your business where you're like, my social media doesn't match up to hers and she has more followers than me and you're starting to feel these things, these are the building blocks and the foundation of building that bigger following that you can eventually pull from. Um, like Ashley kind of mentioned in the beginning, there are top coaches like myself who don't rely on attraction marketing. So personally, my business is built on inviting people, adding people every single day, six years later. And for me, attraction marketing is sort of the cherry on top for that. When I am doing all the work to have these people come to my feed and see who I am, 
what do I want to do? I want to keep them there, right? Attraction marketing is one thing and you can attract someone with a pretty picture or nice lighting and all those things are so important. But the last thing you want is people to be attracted by that and then immediately go away and it doesn't do you any good. So I really want to talk about how do we take those tips and then really use them to have those people actually stick around in our business. So I want to talk about the staying power. How do you translate all of that work, all of those things into, okay, people are attracted to me. Now there is a period of investigation that they will go through on your page. Just like Ashley said, when someone comes to your Instagram, it's that top nine, right? What does that say about you? What are the colors? Is it inviting? Do people want to know more about you? Are you like them? All of those things are going through their head and it happens in 30 seconds. So you really want to make sure that when your people are going through their investigation phase, attraction is only the first step of all of this, right? When they're going through the investigation phase, that you're really honing in on what's important and that is your story. And I want to tell you, how do you weave in your story to all those tactical tips, you know, keeping in mind all of the placement and lighting, gosh, it is so important. You could make a post so much better by having the right lighting. Then after someone is investigating you, they make a decision. They make a decision about you. Do they want to know more? Do they want to know more about what you're talking about, which is our ultimate goal? Do they want to stick around or are they going to go and look somewhere else? And then eventually after they've made that decision, there's still a large time period where people have decided to stick around, but then they make a second decision, whether they want to reach out to you and whether they want, they turn into a conversion, right? A customer or a coach. So there is this whole evolution of after you've attracted someone to your page, whether it be Facebook or Instagram, regardless of social media, that we really need to be concentrating on in order to not only attract people, but keep them around. It doesn't do us any good if we have a ton of followers who don't wanna pay attention to us and then don't wanna make the decision to convert. So I really, you know, I've been loving this example lately and I really wanna talk about it tonight because I just think after a while, after we see, you know, so many examples of other coaches, we really get inundated and kind of soaked with only beach body information. And I love when I can use a real life analogy to translate into our business. I am sure that you guys have heard about this Peloton commercial. It is like the commercial that is ripping apart the industry. Their stocks plummeted, every single blog, every single news outlet, every single person tweeted about it. It was the commercial heard around the world. They have had the worst New Year's Christmas season of all time. They are nearly going out of business this year because of this commercial. I personally did not have bad feelings about this commercial. However, it is such a perfect example of exactly what we do and exactly why they just missed the mark. Like when I heard about all this controversy, I'm like, well, I didn't think anything of it because I'm the type of person that is selling that exact same thing, right? Peloton can be compared to your own business. They are a company about health and fitness. They're trying to tell a story in 30 seconds or less about why you should buy their health and fitness product this Christmas, right? Essentially, we are doing just that. Now, I'm going to share this video with you. It's 30 seconds. Bear with me because I think it's important to understand what I'm talking about if you have not seen it. Let me share the right screen. Share. Okay, okay you ready? Yeah. Now. A Peloton? Give it up for a first time ride. Good. First ride. I'm a little nervous, but excited. Let's do this. Five days in a row. Are you surprised? I am. 6 a.m. Yay. Rising with the sun. That was totally worth it. Let's go break Boston at 50 rides. She just came. A year ago, I didn't realize how much this would change me. Thank you. This holiday, give the gift of Peloton. Okay. okay ready? Not one ounce of me 
personally was offended by that commercial. However, the backlash from that commercial was that the husband is controlling. Why would she need her health and fitness change? She's gorgeous. Um, he must beat her at home. Um, it's sexist because women don't need to work out. Um, why, is, why is she exhausting herself? She needs to escape this relationship. And the point of this commercial was innocent. I loved the commercial. The point of this commercial was she was documenting her health and fitness journey, trying to feel better for herself, exactly what we talk about with people, right? Unfortunately, it, they just missed the mark. And this is what I see happen with coaches in our business. So pay attention. A lot of times I see coaches who are prompted to share their fitness journey. They're prompted to say, I feel so much better. I've been committing to this. I'm making sacrifices, sweaty selfies, a whole page of I'm working out at home. Now I'm working out here. Now I'm doing this workout. And there really is no context about why before. So how they could have changed this commercial is they could have done a couple seconds before the bike shows up in her house saying, okay, maybe she is a really busy mom and she used to go to spin class. And unfortunately, because her daughter's dance class is at that time, she constantly misses spin class. So there could have been a clip of her trying to run into spin class last minute and the door shuts on her and they say no. And she's like, gosh, this is the seventh time this month. I've wasted all of my you know, spin class money. I haven't gone once. Or she could have been um, you know, complaining to her husband. I just really feel like I'm taking care of everybody else and I don't get a chance to take care of me because I have no time. There could have been a clip showing her before how she used to run every morning and now she can't because she hurt her knee or it's too cold outside. There should have been a context before the bike shows up that showed her wanting to make the change, a reason why the bike needs to show up, right? Because everyone's drawing their own conclusions. Well, she didn't say anything about, she already looks stressed out, so she doesn't need to be pushing herself working out and her husband is forcing that upon her, right? We need to understand that everybody reading our story is not in our head. Everybody reading the fact that you're working out at home or starting a business from home has no idea the context of why you're doing that. Take this analogy and put it into your social media. When I go to your social media, is there context clues of why you even started doing this? What are the stories behind your workouts? What are the stories behind why you would like a health and fitness something for Christmas? What are the stories behind why you started your business? Is it the organic vegetables? Is it, you know, you couldn't buy your, I forget what the other story was, but it was so touching. I teared up about the, her daughter wanting snacks. Like the, the small stories and the context clues, if you saw that commercial was 30 seconds long, all they needed was five seconds on the beginning of that commercial in order to make that a hit instead of the epic freaking fail that it was. Now you and I, are of that mindset. So you and I don't think there's anything wrong with that commercial. We're like, good for her, waking up, making sacrifices, recording herself. However, we need to remember that the general population is not there. So we need to make it easier for them for to hear the context before you need to sign up as a coach. So I'm gonna give you some tips how to apply that to your social media. Can you guys see the slides again? Okay. Um, so how do you make it better? How do you not be a Peloton this year? Number one, intentional planning. Who are you? What is your story behind what you're talking about? I think that a lot of times we as coaches get really stressed out about the fact that we have to post a lot and the fact that we have to show, be showing up. And it's a lot of times just spaghetti thrown at the wall, hoping that it sticks. And there's really no intention behind it. So instead of making a post calendar, maybe try thinking about making an intention calendar. 
What do I want people to know about me and my business this month? What are the things and the feelings that I want them to get when they start to learn about me? What are the, you know, what is my goal in 2020? Therefore, what do I need to backtrack and have people know this week, this month, et cetera? I think a lot of times we get very caught up in, let me take the perfect picture. I've got this sweaty selfie. Now I got to do a post about my workout, which is all needed. However, I think it really needs to have some thought on, am I creating that correct context before the pitch, right? Before the pitch of buy the Peloton bike for Christmas, am I creating the right context as to why, who, what, when, where, so that when I do make these pitches and I do ask my social media for that, are they in the right mindset? Secondly, it's in the little details in your storytelling. So oftentimes people think that storytelling means, oh my gosh, I have to have an epic before and after in my life. And I have to have had $200,000 of debt like Bonnie Engel. And I have to have, you know, retired my husband. And it's so not that. The things that people remember about me when they message me are the fact that, you know, one time when Andrew and I lived in New York, we played Yahtzee in the dark because our power went out or they remember the um, shade of lipstick that I talked about in the post about the debt that I got out of in through Beachbody. It's about the little details when you're telling stories. And it's about the little things that you can do to spark creativity and memory in people's minds when they're reading your post. So think about details. Think about, you know, what you were wearing, what what was the time of year? What are some connections that you can make? So for example, a really cool thing to do is if you were born in the 90s, talk about those things because ultimately the people who are attracted to you are going to be talking about those things. It's little details that you can include in your stories that make people remember. Think about what the themes of your life are. You know, Ashley talked about this is this gives us life, but it isn't our life. And Ultimately, there are a million health and fitness companies. There are actually a million bike companies, not just Peloton. But what are the things that set them apart? What are the things that they chose to show in that commercial? They chose to show family. They chose to show a relationship. What are the things that you, the themes of your life that you can weave into your social media that people start to associate with you? So all of these pictures of these women, I guarantee you, you can tell me five personal things about them. You know what their family looks like, you know if they're married or not, you know how many kids they have, you know things that they like, things that they dislike. One of the like most popular stories that I have ever done is this people not returning shopping carts to the corral. Like literally, I will get tagged by someone I didn't even know followed me. Like Bonnie, I'm putting my shopping cart back. It's little tiny details that people associate with you. Small stories. It's not in the big stuff, you guys. It's always the little things that make up our life. So how, what does that mean, right? So we have the ideas, we know some tips. What does that mean for your social media? You know, there, we have these coaches and, and who are just effortlessly good at storytelling. And then there are other coaches who need to learn storytelling. Luckily, storytelling is a learned activity. Everybody can learn it and everybody can do it. What I want you guys to think of is telling the story without telling a story. Have you ever been reading a book and there's so many characteristics about a certain, like the leading character of a story, and then by the end of the book, you're like, oh, she wouldn't want to do that because that's not the type of person she is. But it's not like the book said, I am the type of person who wouldn't like X, Y, and Z. You just got that from the stories that you were hearing. So I want to show you what I mean by that. Leaving effortless context clues on your social media and really treating your Instagram like it is a storybook and you're the leading character. In the book, you're not saying, uh, I really am, you know, I love the color blue and all of X, Y, and Z. And no, you're literally living your life and then people infer things about you. So here's a great post from Emily Favre. She says, don't worry, Ella Grace, I pay 
I pray every day that you end up in Enneagram three, just like your mama and not an Enneagram one, like your perfectionist dad who loads the dishwasher perfectly and takes five minutes to make the perfect bottle and unpacks his bags right after he gets home from a trip. Did I mention his laundry is always caught up? Hashtag serial killer traits. As far as I am concerned, the Enneagram has helped me discover who I am in the past few months. More than 27 years has ever taught me. Have you taken a test? What are you? This is what Emily is saying without saying it. In our business, we work from personality types. I'd love to know yours so I could see if you are a right fit for this. Comment below. Do you guys see the difference? She's taking a personal story, some traits from her and her husband, talking about something that has to do with the business and then polling her audience, basically informing who is going to sign up for her team without saying, I'd like to see who's an Enneagram three here and who's really driven to get some shit done. If that's you comment below and I'll sign you up, <laughs> right? There's a clear difference here, but this post is still doing the same exact thing. This is a post that I did when we had family pictures done. And I told a story about um, our wedding pictures that we actually didn't have um, engagement pictures. We never had, we weren't going to have wedding pictures until it was a surprise gift from Andrew's family. So I go on to say, did you know for our wedding, we weren't going to have a photographer, we couldn't afford it. It was already in my grandparents' backyard, no DJ, no band, just an iPad hooked up to my uncle's old speaker and a friend who was a guest who had a loud voice and could project to introduce us, some kegs of beer and a buffet. We didn't have engagement pictures or an engagement party. In fact, before that, we were at the lowest low of our lives. I remember crying in our 600 square foot apartment, six floor walk up to Andrew saying, will this always be our life? I go on to talk about how it's so different now and I'm so grateful and thankful for the ability to have paid for these new family pictures. Here's what I'm saying without saying it. You don't have to always be successful to do this. I didn't come from success or see myself there. I just started where I was. Does that sound like you? Don't count yourself out, comment below. I'm not saying that, but that's what this post is saying, right? I'm effortlessly leaving context clues through the stories of my life so that I can inform people who I want to join my team. You know, we talk a lot about these tactics of storytelling and we talk about how storytelling is your superpower and the top nine of your Instagram page. And I feel like, you know, we really lose what the point of that is. Yes, there are 400,000 people who are coaches and selling the same thing, but there's only one Ashley. There's only one Delaney. There's only one Amy. And that is ultimately what will set you apart. And you're not a one, a one sided version of a human being. You have nine different sides to show off at all times, right? Make sure your social media reflects that. And remember, don't just miss the mark. Don't just be that person who just posts, you know, I'm working out today or, and don't focus just on the lighting and just on the framing and just on getting the perfect picture. You have to kind of really lean into, am I creating the right environment, not just to attract people to me, but to keep them there, to help them make the decision to stay, and then to help them make the decision to convert. And ultimately, anybody who converts is not converting to Beachbody. Anybody who converts is converting to you. And the moment that you can realize that is the moment that you will literally unleash what is hidden behind all of those fears. I'm not good enough, I don't have enough followers, I don't attract enough people, I have to work harder than everybody else, top coaches don't have to do this, false. The only thing that's standing in front of you and everybody else, and you're just missing the mark if you feel like I don't have a corner on attraction marketing, you just have to switch some things up, concentrate on the story, take those tactical tips, and then, you can really move forward in your business. So that is all I have for you guys tonight. I am so thankful that all of you made the choice to get on tonight and made us a priority. Ashley and I really appreciate it because we are very pregnant. <laughs> um, but seriously, we are so blessed to be able to share with you guys and it is a true honor. I hope you guys take everything that Ashley 
talked about in the beginning because those are some killer tactical tips and really go into this new year with a refreshed kind of you know breath of fresh air over your business and your life and ready to rock and roll in 2020 so thank you guys so much for being here we appreciate you and we'll talk to you soon